What's up? What's happening? Whole tip to you all. On this video clip, uh, what I'm going to do is, is that I want to tackle a question that was posed to me on one of the uh, social networking websites that I'm affiliated with. And we were building on God and building on the question of does God care about us as humans? Um, I think this question was asked to me because many people that watch my videos and things of that nature know that I have a very different, unique, uh, interesting way in, I guess you could say, in looking at God and my views on just religion and, you know, prophets and the Bible is very different. So um, I think this is why the particular young lady that asked me this question chose to ask me this question. And um, it could also have came from a place of, of, you know, just looking at the world and looking at things that go on in the world and all of the catastrophes and all of the control and just all of the negative crap that goes on in the world. And sometimes it makes you just wonder, like, does God truly care? I mean, is God concerned and interested in our affairs? I mean, so this is what I'm going to do on this video is uh, I'm going to answer this question based upon an acronym that's passed around in different secret societies, different lodges, you know, and different um, private schools, if you will. And this acronym breaks down God and translates it, translates it to mean Gomer Oz Debar. This is what God truly is. And Gomer Oz Debar uh, breaks down to meaning it's I believe it's Hebrew and it breaks down to meaning wisdom will and beauty and this is essentially what God is you see God you know when you think about God let's let's talk about the perspective of God on the wisdom perspective God is wise God is a researcher God looks into things. The things that happen to us, whether negative or positive, that are out of our control are based upon either wisdom or the lack of wisdom. Wisdom is knowledge, but your ability to apply knowledge. Your ability to make certain decisions based upon the knowledge that you have up here. In all of the scriptures, when you research God, God is always depicted as a human entity or a physical entity when you research God. And this is because on this plane, these different terms that I spoke of have to be demonstrated by physical beings. So... The highest concept of God, true indeed, is definitely not a physical being, is basically what I'm saying. When you look into the highest ideal of God, God is beyond limitations and boundaries. We are confined to the limitations and boundaries of this body. However, if we are to demonstrate attributes of God, we have to play them out through our physical vessel, through our physical vessel interpreting and translating this experience here in this reality so the things that happen to you like building on the first level of God which is wisdom they happen to you because like I said you either had certain knowledge and you capitalize off of it you were wise you made really good decisions and good choices or you didn't have certain knowledge and you lack certain knowledge and you became you know a victim to your ignorance so you have to be wise like we are what I'm getting at is, is that we are the gods here on this planet physical beings we are the gods however we have to do certain things to access the knowledge of God we decide how things play out on this physical realm everything that happens on this realm whether it's good or bad there's a physical being involved in it you may say well this shooter went and he shot up this school why did God why come God didn't stop him well he was acting as God 
on one level. So how come he didn't stop himself? He had control over his actions, but he wasn't wise enough to make the right decisions, and he chose to take life. So that's the wisdom aspect of God. Then you talk about the will aspect of God. God is will. See, we are under the illusion that we have what's called free will here on this planet. We believe that basically we have the ability to do whatever we want. You know, we're physical sovereign beings, we're independent, and we can basically demonstrate our will and do anything that we want. But we don't see truly, like I was building on the social media website, we were talking about this like multiple choice. An ability to make multiple choice decisions isn't demonstrating true willpower. If I give you a set of options or a set of answers and then ask a question and you choose one of the answers based on the question that I pose, even though you may choose the right answer, you haven't truly exercised your highest level of willpower. You just made a choice based upon circumstances that were put in front of you. See, willpower and will is the ability to create a new way to make a way where there wasn't this is demonstrating will to be in a situation where it looks like you can only do, go right or go left and you choose to go up you see that's willpower inventors and scientists and people that are you know very inquisitive and do you know a lot of research and participate in a lot of trial and error they are participating in exercise. That's truly exercising your will. See, we as humans, our will has become weakened. We think that we have a will, but we don't have a will. And the thing is, is that there are certain extraterrestrial beings that have an invested interest in making you to believe that you are demonstrating your willpower when you go about living your life a certain kind of way. But in reality, you're not. Because if you ask yourself, am I happy with the decisions that I'm making afterwards, am I happy with going to work every day at that job versus doing something that I love to do? No, you're not happy, and that means that you're not exercising your willpower. Willpower comes from a place of happiness, comes from a place of strength. So you have to be God in your life. This is what God is. And lastly, they say God is beauty. And beauty goes into... God being a designer, we say that God made everything in this world. God beautified this world. When the gods came to this planet, see, there were gods that came to this planet that created nature as we know it today. And they grew this planet, or what you call create, because create means to grow. They grew this planet from a very ugly, grotesque state to this beautiful state. You see, you see green trees outside. I mean, you hear beautiful sounds of birds. Everything flows in a certain order and harmony. Every form has a function. This is beauty, but this was created by higher gods. When, the, when they first came to this planet, this planet was underwater. There was no light. There was very little light. There, the weather patterns, for the most part, were out of control. You know, this was essentially more of an aquarium when they first came here. This was a water planet, and through knowledge of science and knowledge of technology and using their willpower and their wisdom, they beautified this planet. And this is the same thing that you have to do for your life. You have to beautify or decorate your life. Beauty is a very much a feminine attribute. When you think about beauty, of course, you think about women. But this is why it's called Mother Nature. Because in order to beautify your life or to design your life, you have to be in tune with the feminine principle or the feminine aspect of your nature. You have to be able to create images in your head and make them manifest here. You have to have a plan. Like a, you, you have to be like an architect. You have to have a blueprint. And then you have to have the willpower and the wisdom to manifest this, this blueprint or this plan that you saw in your head. Just like a hairstylist. Somebody that is into cosmetology. 
See, cosmetology is just like cosmology. You are beautifying. You have an image and an idea in your head before you do that person's hair. And then you manifest it into using your hands and your willpower to create and manifest it. This takes high skill. These are gods that do get into industries like this and run their in and run their their show. See our highest level of expression is really as an artist. You see like the person that created, for instance, the computer. Yeah, you can have this idea of okay, I'm gonna connect create this computer, you're gonna be able to do this and do that on it. But guess what? If the computer doesn't look beautiful, if it doesn't look sleek, if it doesn't look uh impeccable you're not going to attract consumers that want to buy the computer because they're attracted to the beauty aspect of it. That's what gets them in. That's what lures them. So we have to beautify our reality. Like We have to demonstrate attributes of God by doing this. Now there are other dark lords out there that have flipped and created a new acronym for God. And they say that God is gold, oil, and drugs gold oil and drugs this is the exact inverted opposite of what God truly is which is wisdom will and beauty and they flipped it so they get you on drugs to rob you of your willpower you see they have you hooked on oil and things of that nature to put you into a multiple choice reality to feel like okay the only way I'm going to get somewhere is if I have this vehicle or you know what may have you or the only way I'm going to be able to do this or do that is if I'm riding in this car see they have you hooked on oil as a means of control this is the control aspect this robs you of the three positive attributes that we talked about and then you talk about the goal see they, they've taken us off of the gold standard which really was essentially when we had to use our willpower to mine for gold and to collect certain precious metals and we, we can use that as equity or as collateral and then create certain currencies off of it. So what they did was that they monopolized on all of the gold and then created a false currency that was essentially based on nothing of, of paper money and they robbed you of the real life resources here on this planet so they took all the beauty and all the treasure and then they sell it back to you in the form of fiat notes or debt this separates us or this blocks us from being able to access our true abundance because all of these things you know in nature are within you all these things are within you. You have the ability as an alchemist to create gold. Yeah, it takes a long time, but you can but you can create gold. You have the ability to do that. So what happens is that now we have to work backwards. Basically is what's going on. And we have to start from the end to get to the beginning. So now we have to work with these fiat notes that we have so that we can eventually get back to the land. Like one of the rappers said, we now we have to go public so that we can get back, eventually make it back to private. Like my man Lupe Fiasco said, shout out to him. So it's like a lot of people are saying, I'm saying this because a lot of people, they're like, well, how do we get out of this trap or this control thing? And these beings that put us in, like, what are we to do to get out of this thing? And the thing is, is that you are going to have to, you can't just go get you some land and move on some land and knock down some trees and start building your own house and growing your own food because they have laws and not only that you're going to need money and fiat notes to even do that where are you going to get the equipment from to build these things where are you going to get the trees from so we got many people that have aspirations they want to get off the grid and you know and they want to live uh, independent autonomous self-governing life however you are going to have to participate in the game and play the game in order to get to that point. And that's what people fail to realize. There is no way out of this because we created this reality. Whether it was, it was, it may not have been us in these physical bodies, but our ancestors created this economy that we live in. So we have to work backwards to arrive at 
the pristine economy that we used to know that was based on the gold standard where we had the ability to claim land and build things on that land and do things the way we wanted to do it. So you have to have an understanding of law. You don't understand law. You don't understand certain things in law or certain, I guess not certain things, but you don't understand certain laws and codes to be able to demonstrate your freedom. So you are confined by the laws. That's what locks us here. That's what keeps us trapped here is essentially not knowing the law. So we have to participate in the game. You're going to have to become wise. You have to become a researcher. You have to study to get out of this situation. If you don't want to, you know, become a victim and die, you know, at a certain age, like they have it predicted that men are going to die by the age of 60, women are going to die by the age of 80. It takes wisdom to get out of that. You're going to have to become wise and knowing about the human body and knowing about health. They're, they're, if, if, if I was to tell a person to study, like, what you should study, like, as far as, like, uh, subjects, one of the, the, the three most important subjects that, that you should study is law, you should study economics, which is very key, and you should study health. These are the keys and the tools to get out of the situation that we are in. You have to study these things. You have to become, you are the God. Do you care about yourself? There is no God going to come back and save us from this situation, even though we believe that that's going to happen, but if that was going to happen, it would have been happening. We have to save ourselves through being wise, using our willpower to create situations where we didn't see them, and being a designer, artist, and beautifying our reality. This is your life. You are in the driver's seat. You decide what happens next. You see, you have to learn universal law and learn how to be in will with with the with with Mother Nature. Because truly God is universal law. If you don't know those seven or nine, depending on what some people say it's nine, if you don't know those seven or nine universal laws, you don't know God. That is God. That's all God cares about. And if you do things within the boundaries of those laws and if you live your life within the boundaries of those laws, you will free yourself from this reality if you respect the law of attraction if you respect the law of opposites you know if you respect all these different laws I'm not going to go through them here but research and get you a good cabalion if you learn to respect these laws you will free yourself from this situation God is not a respecter of persons meaning that God is beyond your physical being he doesn't respect persons meaning that just because you're a particular person he doesn't respect you more than another person you have to free yourself from the situation. You have to break free from the matrix. People that do bad and get away with it, they get away with it because they know those universal laws. They know the 48 laws of power. And they know that God doesn't respect persons, meaning that even if they're a wicked person that's controlling people, God doesn't care. God will keep allowing them to do that as long as they respect certain laws and doing it. And I know it sounds foul and corrupt, but that's a part of the spell that we have to break. You see, God doesn't... God is in a, in a situation where he or it doesn't care about us as physical beings. We have to free ourselves from the different traps and snares that other physical beings have put us in. So respect yourself. And then you will grow to respect other people. And then you will grow to become this little G, this little God. So... I hope that helped, you know, for someone out there that was just inquiring on different things. Do your research. Be wise. Beautify. Be an artist. Always make a way where you thought it wasn't one. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching.